November 14th meeting of the Parker Planning Commission to order at 7 p.m. Will you please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Absent is Dwayne. Seated for Dwayne is Tracy. Absent is Eric. And Susan is seated for Eric. Are there any additions to or deletions from the agenda? No, sir, there are not. OK. Uh, approval of minutes. We have the minutes from October 24th. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? No, sir. No. Uh, do we have a motion? I move to approve the October 24th, 2019 meeting minutes. I second. It's been moved by John, seconded by Eliana, that we approve the October 24th, 2019 meeting minutes. Please record your vote on the screen. And they pass unanimously. All right. Uh, next item. Um, the item number 6A is a public hearing on the unplatted looking glass segment one, sketch and preliminary plans. We will open the public hearing at 7.02. Paul. Good evening, Mr. Chair and members of Planning Commission. It's nice to be before you again this evening. Uh, as was just mentioned, uh, the first public hearing for you this evening uh, is for the Looking Glass Segment 1 Development Sketch and Preliminary Plan. The project numbers are SUB 19-021 uh, and SUB 19-022. Uh, please note that the applicant has provided the notification affidavit stating that the hearing this evening has been legally noticed. Subject property is located at the southwest corner of Crowfoot Valley Road and Stroh Road. Uh, to the north is undeveloped property, commonly referred to as the Anthology North property. To the west of the subject property uh, is more of the Hess Ranch property that will be uh, developed uh, with future segments of the Hess Ranch property. To the south is a combination of unincorporated uh, Douglas County properties as well as incorporated town properties for single family residential development. And to the east is the same condition with unincorporated Douglas County properties and uh, incorporated uh, town property for single family residential development. Uh, the subject property for the hearing this evening was annexed by the town in 1984. Uh, the property has been zoned for a mix of residential and commercial uses since its annexation. In total, subject property uh, for segment one is about 306 acres. Earlier this year in April, town council approved a partial waiver resolution to allow the applicant to develop uh, this essentially eastern one third of the Hess Ranch uh, property in, um, in, into two segments, this being the first segment. Um, the segment two uh, would be the balance of the property and will be developed uh, with at some point in the future. This is the subject property, again, for the segment one development. Again, Stroh Road uh, to the north, uh, Spirit Trail Boulevard to the west, uh, unincorporated Douglas County properties to the south, and then uh, Crowfoot Valley Road to the east. Um, these sketch and preliminary plans are intended to identify lot layout and configuration, park and open space dedications, road network, infrastructure, as well as uh, trail development. <coughs> As a part of this sketch and preliminary plan, the applicant's proposing 588 single family detached residential lots. Those will be platted in six separate final plat applications. In addition to the 588 new residential uh, lots, there would be a dedication of 136.25 acres of open space, as well as 17.05 acres of park space. 
The subject property for the hearing this evening is identified with low density residential within the town's master plan. This, uh, this um, designation recommends 2.2 dwelling units per acre. The Hess Ranch zoning currently allows for 3,500 residential units throughout the balance of the property. So the 588 units that are proposed as part of this development are certainly well under the maximum allowed within the development. Uh, just for context, the sketch and preliminary plans this evening is the first of uh, two steps in a three-step process for planning residential development here in the town of Parker. Uh, this process does not create the specific lots, open space, or parks, uh, but it does approve the applicant's ability to move forward with the administrative final plat review, which is then recorded uh, with the county and creates those uh, lots, park space, open space, easements, things of that nature. Staff's recommendation this evening, Planning Commission's recommendation this evening, as well as uh, town Council's final action is based on six uh, specific criteria that will be discussed briefly uh, in, in just a moment in this presentation. Uh, the six proposed filings for this segment of development are shown on this slide before you. Uh, filing, so there's filing one was the um, Hess Ranch uh, sketch and preliminary for the infrastructure that was heard by Planning Commission earlier this year. So these plats for residential lots start with filing number two. Uh, filing number two is the light green uh, in kind of the center of the property in kind of that north central area. That filing uh, contains 81 lots. Filing three is in red at the corner of Stroh and Crowfoot. Uh, that is uh, 51 lots. Filing four is the orange that's kind of in the center of the, of the property. That filing contains 125 lots. Filing five is the large kind of pinkish purplish color. Uh, that filing uh, would contain 82 lots. Filing six is the dark blue uh, that would be north of just uh, the extension of Chambers Road. That filing uh, would contain 129 lots. And then filing seven is the dark green and that would contain 120 lots. Uh, this is an image that was provided in the um, staff report for Planning Commission this evening. Uh, but in summary, the yellow uh, area on this slide shows the residential roadway buffer uh, that's been reviewed for compliance with town standards. Uh, the blue area shows the 136.25 acres that are being dedicated for open space. In addition to that open space, there are a variety of, of trail network uh, connections, both hard surface and soft surface within that open space. Uh, as part of the application, uh, the applicant would be required based on the land development ordinance requirements to dedicate 61.35 acres. Again, they're proposing to dedicate 136.25, so um, far and above what the code would require. And then finally, the green area uh, shows the locations of the 17.05 acres that are being dedicated for park development. Um, the details for the park and trail amenities uh, were again provided in the staff report this evening, uh, but the applicant does have a presentation as well for Planning Commission this evening uh, that will have a lot of the details uh, specific to those parks, trails, and, and open space amenities. As was just referenced, there are specific approval criteria for a sketch and preliminary plan. Uh, those are detailed on the slide above you. Um, staff won't go through each of these individually. However, in coordination with our referral agency partners, staff has reviewed the application uh, uh, and determined that the applicant has met these requirements. All referral agencies responded to these applications with either advisory comments that can be addressed uh, with final plants uh, final plats, not plants, um, and uh, those are addressed via the recommended conditions of approval in the staff report before you. And with that, staff recommends that Planning Commission recommend the Town Council approve, subject to the three conditions in your staff report, the requested sketch and preliminary plans for the development of the Looking Glass, also known as Hess Ranch Development. That would conclude staff's presentation. However, staff is available for questions. And again, the applicant uh, does have a brief presentation for you as well, and, and they're certainly available for questions. Questions for Paul? No. No. 
Okay, does the applicant want to come forward? Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the Planning Commission. Thank you very much for having us. My name is Lawrence Jacobson, address 4100 East Mississippi Avenue, Denver 80246. Uh, I want to thank you all for your time and consideration of our application this evening. I also want to thank the staff, the Community Development Department, Public Works and Parks for their uh, thoughtful and very diligent review of what you're uh, reviewing this evening. So thank you all. Um, we were last here in July uh, with our, what we call an infrastructure plat, which uh, is also known as filing one. We did a sketch preliminary plan for that, which set forth the major roadways, which um, uh, delineate the property. Um, we also did a PD amendment at that time where we reconfigured some of the planning areas in order to take into account the dendritic drainage, which we are uh, featuring in our community. So, go ahead, Paul. Um, so, again, I'm Lawrence Jacobson. My business partner, Matt Osborne, is here, and he'll be walking you through some of the details of each individual planning area. I get to do the overview, so he, he does the heavy lifting. Um, we also have our civil engineer, <coughs> Eric McDaniel from EMK, EMK Consulting. Karen Henry, who is our land planner from Henry Design Group, and then CJ Kirst from Tahoe Land Services, who's our development uh, consultant. So, so this will give you a quick context of where we are uh, with relation to the rest of West Parker. So we're, um, the highlighted part is what is within this sketch and preliminary plan. To the north is Anthology North, um, to the direct East is Meadowlark, and then to the southeast is Trails of Crowfoot. Um, Paul had also mentioned, like to our direct south is unincorporated Douglas County. Um, we also have this sort of strange little triangle enclave to our east between us and Meadowlark that's unincorporated Douglas County. And then uh, our western boundary uh, we'll be seeing later in segment two. Um, so that's, uh, that's kind of the context of where we are. Go ahead. Um, so this, this was our PD amendment, and this shows the planning areas, which you're about to see in more detail, but I just wanted to run through a global sketch of, of what we're looking at. And then you can see that this, these planning areas were arrived at by taking into account the dendritic design. If you look at sort of the little blue lines, those are drainage channels or uh, proposed detention ponds. And the intention is to, rather than um, move a lot of dirt and try to rearrange the drainage patterns to you know, work with what Mother Nature has given us and allow for a simpler and uh, more easy to maintain drainage pattern throughout the community. So here's what we wound up with. Um, and this is what I think we're gonna be looking at in more detail tonight. So. Um, Matt will go through this with you a little further, but um, Paul, if you can kind of help me out. First, coming in on Stroh Road, so that, that's uh, filing three. Uh, that, those are 50-foot lots. Then uh, the next filing or planning area, 45-foot uh, lots. Then the next one, also 45-foot lots. 50-foot uh, lots, 50 and 60-foot lots, 60 and 70-foot lots. And then, can you go up to PA6 real quick? This will be coming in later. It has to be designed specifically for the, the, builder, the builder who's going to develop that site. But that one will be paired. So um, we'll have a diversity of product types going from 45-foot lots, 50-foot lots, 60-foot lots, 70-foot lots, and paired all within the total, I think, 678 units in, in this first segment. So this will show you the parks, trails, and open space, and we developed a, you know, a very detailed parks, trails, and open space plan with Dennis, and um, this follows that plan. So you'll see that every neighborhood, neighborhood has its own park, uh, and in addition, we're featuring the open space in the middle, particularly um, Brandy Gulch, which, which is where you'll see in the next slide the regional trail will go through. 
Um, but I can tell you if, you know, when, when we're moving forward, if you want to come out and see that Brandy Gulch, it's a really beautiful piece of open space. It will have trails and uh, it's something that we're really featuring as the main marketing component to our builders and to our residents. And then here's the trail connectivity plan. So the dark, the black, thicker line, that's the regional trail. So you can see it starts up on Crowfoot and then winds through the community and ends up in Brandy Gulch. And then um, what you can't really see there is there will be a bridge over uh, Spirit Trail Boulevard there. And the trail will continue under that bridge and then continue on into uh, the western segments and continue up Brandy Gulch. Uh, the pink, you know, lighter lines are local trails, so those are eight-foot trails, and those provide connectivity sort of within each of the planning areas um, where you can get out to the regional trail or uh, you can get from your house via trail to the local parks. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Matt Osborne, and he will take you through the rest of the presentation. So thank you very much, and we're all available for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of Planning Commission. My name is Matt Osborne. Uh, I am also at 4100 East Mississippi Avenue, Denver, Colorado, 80246. Uh, thank you for your time, and I would also like to thank staff for their, uh, their diligent efforts. Uh, we've spent a lot of time with them over the course of the last year and a half working through this plan, and uh, we're very excited to be able to present this to you in, in more detail and um, as we go forward to, to see this uh, community start to come out of the ground. It's uh, featuring a lot of, uh, I think, very exciting elements. Uh, as, Mr. Jacobson mentioned the dendritic design and, and how that really impacted the approach to the planning and, and you'll start to see that. Uh, you can certainly see that here with this overview and how a lot of the open space areas are integrated into many of the neighborhoods. So I'm gonna walk you through each of the, each of the neighborhoods um, fairly quickly here um, out of respect for your time. Uh, if you have specific questions, we can certainly circle back, but just wanna give you a, an overview of each of the neighborhoods and some of the detail within those neighborhoods and, and specifically with the park within the park areas in those neighborhoods. So uh, filing two is, uh, I'll go sequentially. Um, filing two is actually the second neighborhood into the west from Stroh and Cro the Stroh and Crowfoot <coughs> intersection. It is a, a portion of planning area seven. Uh, again, it's located south of Stroh Road. Stroh Road runs to the north of the uh, neighborhood. It'll be 81 lots. Uh, the lot sizes will be 45 feet wide by 110 feet deep. Uh, and there's pretty significant open space areas, as you can see, adjacent to the property along basically buffering between the lots and Crowfoot Valley Road. Um, there is a large park area uh, integrated. Uh, there are actually two park areas within the uh, this filing um, that are really, uh, instead of centrally locating a lot of these parks within neighborhoods, we've uh, located them more within the broader looking glass community so that multiple neighborhoods can share and, and really utilize uh, that area and, and make these parks very accessible to the broader neighborhood. Uh, so Paul, if we can go to the next. So this gives you a, a uh, more detail of that park, the larger park within filing two. Uh, the park sits in between uh, what will be filing two and filing four to the left, the, the lots that are not colored. Um, so it'll serve both of those. It's 5.6 acres, but it really feel larger than that as you've got the open space area to the south and east um, adjacent to that, uh, to that park. Uh, it also nicely sits at the entrance to that neighborhood um, with the entrance off Stro coming in from the north of that park and that access will dead end at that park. Uh, some of the amenities, uh, they're labeled there, but they will include a large playground, large open, lawn area and uh, kind of on the east or sorry on the west side of the of the park um, the left part of the screen an enhanced drainage swale uh, with native planning and and a nature path with interpretive signage and this is really an extension of that dendritic drainage program it's really taking that drainage and extending it back up through that park um, so you're kind of working with the natural topography of the property the next neighborhood is filing three, and that's uh, 
east of filing two, uh, that is at the southwest corner of the intersection of Stroh and Crowfoot Valley Road will be accessed off of Stroh Road. Uh, this will be a total of 51 lots, um, lot size 50 feet wide by 110 feet deep. Um, the open space area primarily in this neighborhood is the buffer area along Crowfoot Valley Road and Stroh Road, so a large buffer area right at the intersection which will contain entry monumentation uh, and that buffer. Uh, you may remember when we went through the PD amendment, uh, this area was uh, or this planning area was uh, zoned mixed use. We rezoned it to residential. Part of one of the main reasons was the topography in that area. So there's significant grade at that corner. Uh, so what you'll see when that's eventually built out is a large, um, some monument walls and extensive planting to really uh, accommodate for that grade change from the intersection up to the neighborhood. Next slide, Paul, thanks. The uh, this park that uh, serves this neighborhood uh, is a smaller park. It's one acre in size. Uh, it is technically contained in, in filing two, but will serve filing three. Uh, the park sits between the two, the two neighborhoods, main amenity, a playground, and an open play area. Again, highly visible along the entrance road to the neighborhood, to filings two and three. Uh, and this will be the connection uh, for the regional trail uh, up from the buffer area in Crowfoot Valley, along Crowfoot Valley Road towards Stroh, uh, Stroh Road to the north. Next slide, please. Filing four, as we're moving west now, is uh, the uh, second uh, half, essentially, of planning area seven. It is also located south of Stroh Road to the north, 125 lots, typical lot size, 45 feet wide by 110 feet deep. Uh, the open space area really for this is served by the park that we already walked through in filing two to the east and the open space area and park to the west that will be incorporated in filing five. Um, go ahead, Paul. Sorry. Um, and, and I should just mention on filing four, um, trail connections to the regional trail system, um, as you'll see in, in all of these filings. Uh, fi moving on to filing five. Uh, this is planning area eight, uh, located south of Stroh Road and just east of Spirit Trail Boulevard. It's a total of 82 lots, 50 by 100 feet, uh, 50 feet wide by 110 feet deep. Um, it, this does show a lot of open space area um, because this really picks up uh, a lot of the open space uh, dedication that encompasses Lemon Gulch and parts of Brandy Gulch. So that's why that number is pretty significant. Um, it also maintains uh, that open space area to the east of the filing um, that is another drainage area that's being extended up through those neighborhoods and, and really, again, uh, is a, an influence of that dendritic design process. Next slide. So two parks in this filing. Uh, the larger park, 3.29 acres. Uh, the amenities include a playground, large open lawn area, uh, incorporation of some native um, area and some vegetation along the west side of the park. Again, highly visible, sits along the major entrance of the neighborhood uh, from Spirit Trail Boulevard. And again, a connection to the regional trail system. Next one, please. Uh, this park is the smaller park of the two in the neighborhood. Sits between filings five and future filing, and also serve future filing eight, uh, the paired homes that Mr. Jacobson mentioned. That will be to the north. Um, the amenities here, playground, open lawn area, as you can see, um, and then the significant connection to the regional trail system along that open space area to the east. Uh, so that'll be a nice connection back down towards Lemon Gulch and also to the north um, as well. Moving on, filing six, as we move now south of Brandy Gulch, uh, Spirit Trail Boulevard being to kind of the north and west of the property, and Chambers Road, these are the two filings that will be served um, in segment one off of Chambers Road. Uh, so filing six is planning area 21. Uh, it's 129 lots, a mix of 50 foot wide by 110 foot deep lots and 60 foot by 110 foot deep lots. Um, primarily broken, the 50-foot lots are on the west side of the filing, 60-foot lots on the east side. In the open space area, 
of just over 15 acres, which includes a, a large portion of Brandy Gulch. If we could move to the next slide. So this shows the park um, and, and really, all the parks are, these are all fantastic designs that our consultants have put together. These are some of my favorite parks. Uh, this being one that we, we really, um, we spent a lot of time and a number of occasions were out on the site with staff. And this, uh, this park is gonna feel significantly larger. The park size technically is only three acres, but it's adjacent to the Brandy Gulch open space area. And some of the features of this, play, or this park, we, we have a, more formal playground, an open space uh, or an open lawn area, a pump track area, which is kind of the squiggly line just to the north, um, and really a, an incorporation of significant native area and, and vegetation. Kind of the light green in the middle of the park is large clumps of, um, of scrub oak that are going to be preserved in that area. So you're going to have really a nice balance of passive and, and active areas within this park. Um, and then obviously the connection to the north to the Brandy Gulch open space area and the regional trail that will run through there. Next and finally is, is filing seven. Uh, this is uh, planning area 25, Chambers Road to the north. Um, access will be off Chambers Road. Um, 120 lots, lot sizes broken out between 60 by 100 and foot, 110 foot lots in the north part of the, of the filing and 70 by 110 foot lots on the south side of the filing. Um, open space area is uh, just under 40 acres. This is pretty significant, um, includes portions of Lemon Gulch. And then the area to the east of the filing, kind of in that dark green uh, where the cursor is running is a significant ridge line that really buffers this filing from Crowfoot Valley, from Lemon Gulch and Crowfoot Valley Road. Um, really excited about how that's going to feel with this neighborhood. It was, uh, it's really going to be preserved in its natural state, has some nice vegetation on that ridge line and a nice connection to the park area. Uh, last slide here. Um, and then the park plan, this is going to be more of an informal park, uh, again, adjacent to that open space area, um, some development, but mostly trails and connections to more of those native areas that will be preserved. Um, and connections to the regional trail system, Lemon Gulch, et cetera. So, um, so in conclusion, first of all, I just wanted to touch on Looking Glass. We've, we've, uh, we're rebranding the uh, property from Hess Ranch to Looking Glass. And really the idea and the concept behind Looking Glass, so Looking Glass is a mirror, and the concept is the plan and the community theme really reflect the quality of the existing open space on site in the small town feel of Parker and the Western heritage of Colorado. And really, I think what's been created with our consultants and working with staff is, is a nice reflection of um, all the good things that are, uh, that are currently available in Parker and, and really leveraging the, uh, uh, the, the benefits and the qualities that exist on the site. And the result of this forward-looking approach will be a community that will be anchored by large areas of open space, exemplified by Lemon Gulch and Brandy Gulch, um, some unique neighborhood parks and high-quality new homes tailored to the wants and needs of future residents. So with that, I will uh, end my presentation. I would request your approval of the Segment 1 sketch and preliminary plans. As Mr. Workman uh, walked you through, we have met, we feel, the criteria um, as outlined. Uh, for the approval uh, for the sketch and preliminary plan, and we agree with the conditions that are recommended by staff. Uh, I would like to again thank staff, um, specifically Paul, Dennis, um, Alex Mestaw in the engineering department. Uh, we have spent countless hours together um, working through this plan and, and kind of getting down to very minute detail, and I think the result is a plan that uh, certainly we're very proud of. Um, I hope the town will be as well and will certainly uh, be attractive to future residents of the town of Parker. So with that, we'll uh, are available for any questions. Thank you. Uh, questions for the applicant? Um, I have a couple questions. The, I just wanted to clarify the, the, the homes that, the paired homes that you don't have a plan for yet, because those would be specifically designed for the builder. The number of homes, is there an estimate on how many homes would be in that, that section? The plan, the, the PD plan, homes? yes, the, the PD plan that was approved that, that you all saw back in August uh, allows for 90 
homes okay. in that uh, in that planning area. I couldn't so that's remember the what it was. Yes. Thank you. And the parks would they be a, all HOA parks? Are any of them being dedicated to the to the city afterwards? It, everything that you see in this plan will be HOA dedicated to the homeowners association okay. that we established for the community. Other questions? Uh, I just have one on your regional trail. What are you looking at for your surface on that trail? Is uh, gravel, concrete, what? It, it'll be concrete. Concrete. Yes. And then the but, but supporting trails will be. A mix of concrete there will be some soft surface trails so there, there's a, a hierarchy from the regional trail and local trails that will be concrete we will have some uh, more meandering trails that will be soft surface so there'll be a mix of different trail types thank you anything else thank you thank you any further questions for paul not at this nope. time no no <clears throat> All right, as this is a public hearing, we will open the meeting to public comment on this particular item before that. Before us, if you have a comment on this item, please step forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, we will close the public comment. Uh, any further questions for Paul or the applicant? Nope. No. 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 All right, we will close the public hearing at 731. Commissioner discussion. You know, I think this is a uh, well thought out uh, development. I, I really like what they're doing and the variety of lot sizes, uh, the amount of open space, and more than that, working on the new drainage system, I think is going to be a real compliment to the town of Parker. And I look forward to seeing this, uh, have a shovel stuck in it very soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how the den, this dendritic uh, drainage uh, works, and so I'm looking forward to seeing that come to fruition. We have a lot of familiarity with this because we just looked at it for the, uh, for the rezoning that we did, so um, it's, uh, it's a well-designed well -designed community. Yeah, I like the current sketch and preliminary plan application. It, uh, I think, more than satisfies the uh, density for the single-family homes, uh, the acreage for the open space and parks. And I also like the uh, amount of uh, buffering along uh, Crowfoot Valley Road in there. You don't see a lot of buffering, I think, in, in a lot of communities, but I think this has it, so I like that. I really don't have much to add. I'm in agreement with everybody's comments so far. I think it's going to be a great asset to the town. Um, I also agree with the previous comments. What I'm most um, really impressed with is the amount of green space in the parks. I think that's fabulous. I agree with my fellow commissioners. Yeah, it looks like, a, again, to echo the remarks of the other commissioners, it, it's a well-thought-out plan, it appears. So uh, do we have a motion? I move the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the proposed up platted looking glass, unplatted looking glass, segment one, sketch and preliminary plan subject to the three conditions in staff's report. I'll second. It's been moved by John, seconded by Rich, that Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the proposed unplatted looking glass, segment one, sketch and preliminary plan subject to the three conditions in staff's report. Please indicate your vote on the screen. Motion passes unanimously. All right, next item. Item 6B is a public hearing for the Blair Industrial Park replat of tract 3L3, use by special review for Camp Bow Wow Kennel Expansion. Almost there. There we go. And we will turn it over to Brianna. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman and Planning Commission. This is a proposal. Can you hear me? Okay. We need to get a little closer. Is that better? Yes. That's okay. Better. Thank you. Thank you. This is a proposal for a use by special review to allow for the expansion of an observation kennel and pet daycare facility for Camp Bow Wow. Camp Bow Wow is proposing to expand at their existing property, 
property located at 10325 Progress Way. The subject property is located at the southeast corner of Progress Drive and Mountain Man Drive. The main entrance for Camp Bow Wow is located at the west side of the building, which is the back side of the building as shown from Progress Drive. This property is located within the Light Industrial Zoning District, which requires a use by special review for observation kennels and pet daycare facilities. Camp Bow Wow has been in operation for the last 12 years. Town Council approved the use by special review in 2007 for a 6,875 square foot indoor facility with three outdoor play areas as shown in red. With the proposed expansion, the applicant intends to expand within the existing building with an addition of 1,876 square feet and the addition of one more outdoor play area of 761 square feet. The total the total kennel count will increase by 22% or 18 kennels going from 62 kennels to 80 kennels total. Camp Bowell will continue to operate between the hours of 6.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. The clients will drop off and pick up during various times throughout the day. The facility will continue to operate under the most recent operations manual and camper health care and cleaning guide. The applicant is working with staff on additional on-site improvements, which include repaving and improving the existing parking lot. The current parking lot has been damaged over time from other tenants over the years. The proposed improvement will increase on-site parking and will meet the required on-site parking per the land development ordinance for observation kennels and pet daycare facilities. In the past five years, there have been no calls for enforcement or compliance cases cases filed with Camp Bow Wow or on this property. Within the last few days, staff has received a number of letters both in support and opposition for this expansion. These have been printed and provided to the Planning Commission prior to the meeting, and these have also been added to the case file online. There are nine criteria used to evaluate a use by special review. These criteria ensure that the use will be consistent with the surrounding area, will not result in overuse of the land, create traffic congestion, or be detrimental to the town. Staff has reviewed the proposal and as outlined within the staff report, has determined that the project is consistent with the master plan. The project satisfies the nine criteria required for the, in the land development ordinance for a use by special review, and the public notice requirements have been met. Staff is recommending that Planning Commission recommend that Town Council approve the use by special review request to allow an expansion of an observation kennel and pet daycare facility use in the light industrial zoning district with the six conditions outlined in the staff report. Staff is available for any questions that planning commissioners may have and the applicant is also present this evening to answer any operational questions. Questions for Brianna? Brianna, based on the uh, information provided and the complaints from uh, apparently some joint residents, has anything been done to address the noise from the barking issue? Uh, so we did the evaluation of this based on, uh, we reviewed prior complaints, so we worked with code compliance and looked into the history to see if there was any complaints on file, and we didn't see anything that came up within the last five years. So based on our analysis, we use that for the noise, ba um, the noise requirement for this condition. Um, they're basically they're just taking over the entire building rather than having one portion for another tenant. Is that correct? There's still one other tenant in the building. Uh, there's <coughs> a dog grooming facility in that front portion. Uh, that's not proposing to change. There was a landscaping tenant there, and they're taking over that tenant. They're space. taking over that space, and the space that they're taking over is that uh, the space that's adjacent to where uh, someone has objected to the expansion, or is that? Uh, is that complainant actually, or the, the person who's objecting, where are they located relative to the new space that's being taken over? The new space is on the southern portion of the building, and the the complaint complainant is on the north side of the building okay. across the street. Other questions for Brianna? No. no. Questions for the applicant? Is the applicant here? Yes. yes, they are. Ah, okay. 
Uh, I have a couple questions. Would the applicant step forward to the microphone, state your name and address for the record, please? Hello, my name is Marissa Mew. Pull the mic down. Hi, Thank you. Sorry. My name is Marissa Muha. I'm with PM Design Group. I'm the architectural representative. Uh, Bryce Christensen with Kimley Horn is our civil engineer for the project. Mm -hmm. Gina Paradisio is the client or applicant. And then Jean Jewell is corporate camp bow wow. So we're all here to answer any questions. Great. Uh, the question I had was, what what sort of um, work do you do with your your customers, or is your your your? Um, it was delightful reading your operation manual this afternoon. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, your your parents yes, <laughs> of your campers. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what what do you do uh, in terms of instructing them and helping them help you be good neighbors? Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not really sure what you mean by that, but kind of, so, I mean, it's a really Well, in terms of instructions you give them regarding where their dogs can uh, eliminate oh. before coming into the facility, uh, where they park, that sort of thing. Yeah, like parking, um, we're, I mean, she's going to talk about that, so I don't want to misspeak or say something wrong, but we are gaining 16 parking spots. So this whole thing is a little frustrating because we're making it better and we're gaining parking spots. We're actually doing this to fix that problem. Okay. Um, and so the problem exists from multiple tenants along the private drive, and we're definitely not the main source of that. So mm -hmm. um, all the neighbors, but apparently one can agree to kind of work through it, and we park off site. Um, as far as our clients, the pet parents, they are just a quick drop off and pick up. I'm sure there's some people that walk their dogs around, but I don't really have control over that and like where they go. They're, they have like area like in our private, you know, controlled parking lot whatever you call that fence that they can go to fence an area that they can go to the bathroom if they want. But most of them come inside and we put them straight into a play yard and they go to the bathroom. Okay. So I would say that's how that pretty much works because most of them are quick, like on their way, like get out of the car, take them inside, come back. And it's a pretty quick turnaround. Okay. Quick question. Because of the noise complaints that you've received from, from neighboring tenants, are you planning on doing anything in the new section that you're trying to take over that might help abate that noise complaint? Um, so not necessarily. So I wasn't really, I mean, in 12 plus years, we don't have noise complaints that mm -hmm. I was aware of. Okay. <laughs> so like, I'm not, we've, I don't know if like one disgruntled neighbor counts as like noise complaints. Like we haven't, ha I, I wasn't aware of that. I own two locations, um, one in Centennial and one here. So I go back and forth. Um, and I wasn't aware of that situation. Like we're a light industrial area. There's a lot of noise coming from all the auto shops around us and everything all day. So, I mean, you're, I'm, I've been doing this for 15 years, so I'm a little biased. I don't hear what other people hear, you know? <laughs> so it's a little hard for me to <coughs> hear the noise. It's white noise to me at this point. <laughs> but so the answer to that is we're just essentially giving dogs more space in the entire facility. So we're trying to clean up our grounds, gain more parking, and adding 25% more indoor space and then just happening to like go over to that adding another yard. And that's just operationally makes it better. You can separate the dogs by their disposition better. We have four yards and five is much better and works a lot better because we separate by size and disposition. So mm -hmm. it allows you to separate them safer. Okay, so, thank you. Further question? None. Mm -mm. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Uh, this part of the meeting is uh, where we come to public comment. If anyone has a comment on the item before us, uh, you may step forward to the podium. We allow three minutes per speaker. Uh, state your name and address for the record. And we will open it to public comment.
Uh, thank you, commissioners, for giving me the opportunity to speak. I appreciate it. My name is Nicholas Ratkai with RS Associates, 10315 South Progress Way, Parker, Colorado. Uh, we have been a Parker uh, business since 1985. Uh, we've been in this building since 1987. We are the closest building to Camp Bow Wow and their entrance opens facing us. The dog barking is a nuisance and goes on for a good portion of the day and can also be heard inside the offices of units six, eight, and 10, which are on the south side of our building. Staff reports from Parker Planning and the project narrative from PM Design are somewhat misleading. We have six businesses in our building, not one. We have Parker Sign, Mile High Basements, Altmix Drywall, Parker Hawks Youth Sports, Hardy's Motor Works, and us. Um, we all add to the vital economic impact for Parker. The project narrative also states that our businesses are not open during Camp Bow Wow's busy times. We are open all day. We are adversely affected by noise pollution, traffic, and parking. All these will increase with expansion. <clears throat> we lost a very good tenant, a 10-year tenant in Unit 8, partially because of dog noise. The letter states, it has been our pleasure to be your tenant for the last several years. However, the growing business, changing employee needs, and the noise level as a result of Camp Bow Wow have necessitated that we relocate our office. Um, during this time, because of this vacancy for nine months, we lost approximately $22,500 in rental income. Um, this, uh, while showing the space to prospective new tenants on two to three occasions, they expressed a concern about the constant dog noise. This affected our ability to lease and these people went elsewhere. We had several parking issues. I've had to ask Camp Bawa employees to not park in our lot. Um, expansion will only create more parking issues. During drop-off drop and pickup, our current tenant in Unit 8 reported to me that he had been parked in several times and could not leave. Once a Camp Bow Wow customer parked so close to his front door that they could not open the door. Um, dog waste is an ongoing issue. Last Wednesday, November 6th, I cleaned up about 20 dog wastes on our property. It is unsanitary, can be easily picked up by dog owners. Our business depends on our ability to lease space. We are the only non-owner occupied building adjacent to Camp Bow Wow. We have six uh, tenants currently, and we must have a full building to succeed. Um, we also, I believe the roadway between us was originally set up as a fire lane on both sides. I think we all want emergency access to the buildings. Camp Bow Wow always parks on their side. Lastly, I uh, consequently, I asked the Planning Commission to deny the expansion. Thanks, Any sir. questions? No, no, sir. Thank you. And I also, I also have an audio if you want to listen. That's okay. No, that, no. Seeing no further public comment, we will close the public comment section of the meeting. Um, any questions for the applicant or Brianna? Um, I, I'd like to hear more about the new parking lot. Hello, I'm Marissa Muha with PM Design Group. I'm the architectural representative. Um, 7200 South Alton Way, Suite B, 270, Centennial, Colorado. Uh, for the parking lot as it is existing, uh, with the landscape company now leaving the premises, uh, the heavy equipment has damaged the parking lot quite substantially. Uh, there was no defined parking striping. The existing trash bins uh, were in what would account to about two and a half, three spots uh, in front of the Camp Bow Wow. What we are doing is proposing an enclosed trash enclosure over to the south corner of the parking lot. Uh, we will be striping 13 
uh, continuous stalls, adding one parallel, also with the proposed bike rack, which will hold three bar, uh, sorry, bikes. At the main entrance, we will have our two ADA accessible parking stalls with the five foot van aisle as well. Um, the side street parking, which is not always occupied by Camp Bow Wow clients or employees, um, that holds about 10 spaces um, comfortably. Now, the northern, par or, I'm sorry, the eastern parking lot has one ADA and 14 standard stalls that can now be utilized for the dog grooming company as well as Camp Bow Wow and their employees. Per the land development code, we need to have 30 parking spots. We are proposing 31, 28 standard stalls, and three ADA. Also, the concrete pad at the entrance will be heated uh, to keep that well warm and the snow off during the winter. Uh, this way, the clientele can come in safely, uh, drop off the dogs, and um, leave the premises. We are hoping to alleviate a lot of the parking uh, issues that are going to be on site. I've spent a lot of time there since March. I've been learning the operations and how the drop-off procedures work. We really believe that this will help mitigate a lot of the parking issues. Uh, we can't bow wow, cannot control uh, the automotive companies down the way with the pneumatic tools that also cause the noise issues as well. Um, but we're hoping that this can alleviate a lot of that traffic that comes in and out throughout the day. Will there be a landscaping area within the new parking uh, and entrance areas that will uh, encourage people if their dogs do need to relieve themselves to do it there rather than anywhere else uh, among the neighbors? Yes, now that the landscape company is out and they don't have the large trailers, trucks, bobcats being over there, the existing landscape area that is there will be maintained. There is grass over there as well. It will be a lot more comfortable environment for the clients, both furry and human. Uh, mm -hmm. that if they do need to have that emergency, it is right there, right in front of the cars. Okay, thank you. Other questions for the applicant? No, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Nope. We will close the public hearing at 7.52. Commissioner discussion. This is more for Paul. Have the six conditions, or sorry, for Rihanna, have the six conditions been met? Sorry. As in the nine criteria or the six conditions that are in the staff report? In the staff report. Uh, they will continue to operate in accordance with those six, six conditions moving forward. Okay, thank you. Discussion? Um, I, I am going to support this. Uh, I understand the concerns of the owner of the other property, and I appreciate you coming tonight to discuss the problems. Um, but I think this is a plan that's uh, working towards, I mean, you're not going to get rid of Camp Bow Wow, and this is a way to improve the situation there, um, having the additional landscaping available to the tenant, uh, to the uh, to the pet owners, and also uh, the expansion of additional uh, outdoor space as well as indoor space is on the opposite side of the building from where your current tenants are, as I understand it. So uh, given that, uh, there would be no real change. If we denied it, there'd be no change in terms of the, uh, the amount of barking that would be heard on the far side of the building. Um, yeah, I don't believe so. Uh, but I would encourage uh, the other tenant, uh, the, the owner of the other property, to encourage their tenants that if for some reason they find there's a problem and they can't work it out, to go through community service and to approach that. I noted that the letter uh, that you submitted is, is, was from two years ago um, and that there has not been any complaint, as I understand it, from uh, community service officers haven't registered any complaints since that two years has come up. So that, that 
makes me think that this would be fine to approve. That's my thinking. I agree with Ruth Ann and also that this does meet the nine criteria that are established for use by special review. And so with that, I will uh, be supporting it. I, I understand the concerns of the, uh, of the other building owner. But as Ruth Ann suggested, uh, there are vehicles to use within the town, community services being the major one that you can, if you're having an issue, contact them and uh, make, make it a more professional workout between uh, people who own or rent property within the same area. Yeah, I agree with John and Ruth Ann that the nine criteria have been met. And I think with the improvement of the uh, parking area and exterior of the building, that it will alleviate a lot of the parking problem and, and improve this. And uh, uh, hopefully we'll have better relations between all the tenants in the area. I agree with my fellow commissioners. I have nothing to add. I also agree. Yeah, it appears to me that uh, the this uh, expansion is also an improvement of the parking situation and the outdoor grass situation that's holding it within the property of Camp Bow Wow. And so I will be in support of it as well. Do we have a motion? I move the planning commission recommend town council approve the Blair Industrial Park replat of track three, lot four, use by special review request to allow the expansion of the observation candles and pet daycare facility to include 7,450 square feet of indoor space and 3,810 square feet of outdoor space, subject to the six conditions contained in staff's report. A second. It's been moved by John, seconded by Rich, that Planning Commission rec recommend Town Council approve the Blair Industrial Park replat of Track 3, Lot 4, use by special review, request to allow the expansion of the observation kennels and pet daycare facility to include 7,450 square feet of indoor space and 3,810 square feet of outdoor space, subject to the six conditions out contained in the staff's report. Record your vote on the screen. Passes unanimously. I'm gonna play music chairs now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next item, item number seven is a public meeting. Seven uh, A is a draft resolution uh, number 19-101, a resolution to adopt, adopt the Parker Quarter Plan as part of the Parker 2035 Master Plan. We will open the public meeting at 7.58. Mary? Thank you, Chairman and Commissioners. Good evening. Again, this is the public hearing for the adoption of the Parker Road Corridor Plan. Parker Road, also known as State Highway 83, is a Colorado Department of Transportation CDOT owned and maintained facility. The corridor plan study area extends along Parker Road between the town's northern and southern boundaries and includes areas um, generally between uh, Cherry Creek on the west and Pine Drive and Hilltop to the east. This area has also been divided into three sub-areas, the north, central, and southern areas. The corridor plan is an integrated land use and multimodal transportation plan for the town and CDOT. Community development coordinated with engineering, public works, parks and recreation, economic development, and P3, our Urban Renewal Authority, to develop this plan along with our integral regional partners, uh, Douglas County, E470, and the Parker community. This project advances necessary long-range transportation and land use planning with our regional partners to develop solutions in the corridor for <coughs> increasing traffic and congestion, improved multimodal transportation options, 
Land uses that better tie with our transportation infrastructure as the two influence each other. The economic health of the town and the aesthetics of the corridor. These are also the same issues uh, actually that staff continues to hear from community outreach with other plans and projects and general community engagement. Parker Road is a regionally significant highway and transportation corridor and it also serves as the primary commercial corridor as well as a welcoming gateway to the town of Parker. Uh, the community's vision of the corridor is that Parker Road will also support a diverse mix of land uses that foster economic vibrancy for the town, maximize safety and efficiency of traffic operations, be the economic spine for the town, and interconnect the town's multimodal transportation network. You don't need to read the fine print on this slide, but a, a few of the highlights of the plan's objectives are to update the Parker Road Access Management Plan, that's a CDOT document, um, and we would partner with CDOT to update that. Inform um, the Land Development Ordinance Modernization Project that we also currently have going on. Prioritize capital projects within the corridor and update the Parker 2035 Master Plan to reflect any needed policy changes in order to implement this plan. Town staff and the consultant conducted a robust outreach process that included an interactive project website, stakeholder interviews, community open house workshops, and an online survey. Um, actually, to date, we have over 4,000 people who have visited the project site with almost 1,200 participants active on our project website, so that's, that's pretty successful. What we've heard from the community, as previously mentioned, are much of the same comments heard with other outreach, such as the physical condition of Parker Road is rather uninviting, traffic and congestion, uh, poor access to business, which impacts the consumer's decisions to patronize those businesses or they go elsewhere, uh, sidewalk gaps also, uh, to name a few, some of the opportunities we've heard include creating um, and inviting median streetscape landscaping, especially at our uh, northern and southern boundaries, gateways, and also near downtown. Improve or simplify access points. Utilize alternate routes to better distribute traffic. And also encourage appropriate businesses along the corridor. Components that were analyzed um, with this study for alignment and consistency with the Parker 2035 master plan included transportation, land use, and urban design. Key intersections that were identified, analyzed, and proposed alternatives were developed. Uh, in the northern sub area were Pine Lane and Lincoln and then Main Street and 20 mile intersections in the central sub area. These intersections were identified for needed traffic operation improvements, as well as they were also analyzed for impacts on land use, aesthetic improvements, and the feasibility for economic growth and development. This is another eye chart you don't have to read, but this is an example of our consultant's intersection analysis of multiple different options considered. From there, the consultant narrowed it down to that refined list on the previous slide I just went through. For land use in the northern and southern sub areas, these areas are considered areas of master plan alignment so land use recommendations um, in these areas were minimal since they are areas of newer development where land uses and development are stable and more balanced with the transportation network including good access strategies. The central sub area is considered an area of needed refinement. Within this central area are um, two focus areas that our consultant keyed in on. 
Um, a little hard to see on the screen, but they look like dumbbells up in that colorful area. The two brown, small brown areas were identified as having underutilized parcels and so recommended for higher intensity development at time of redevelopment. The light purple color uh, between Progress Way and Dransfelt, the plan recommends a more diverse mix of commercial land uses in this area, and, and that would also encourage more employment. In the area below uh, the colorful area, it's the unhighlighted pink area, the plan also recommends expanding the um, Main Street master plan character area to include the Briargate apartments that are in that area, and that would help to better align with our uh, 2035 master plan. The rest of the areas will not change from the existing Parker 2035 master plan. Urban design, uh, that's how the corridor looks and feels. Recommendations for both the northern and southern sub areas are to design and implement a median and streetscape treatment to improve the corridor's aesthetics, um, one that's reflective of Parker's high quality aspirations. And uh, there's an example on the right side of the screen. The plan recommends basically the same improved median and streetscape treatments for the uh, central sub area. Um, this is a little bit different. This would recognize those properties that are access dependent on Parker Road, but also consider the character of the downtown area. Design should be reflective of this area's um, sense of place expectations as well. The implementation chapter six includes a table of recommended actions identified per sub area. Um, with project phasing of near, mid, or long-term projects. Also identified in the table are um, funding and partnership resources. Lastly, the next steps include uh, updating the Parker 2035 Master Plan for integration of any land use and policy changes, implement zoning modifications um, to allow for appropriate land uses in areas identified with redevelopment opportunity, Work with CDOT to implement uh, an updated Parker Road Access Management Plan and an updated optimization plan. Also coordinate with CDOT and Douglas County on the next process, uh, next steps which could potentially be a uh, planning and environmental linkages study, a PEL, from Main Street to 20 Mile. And finally, the town needs to commit to and prioritize corridor investments um, that maximize both transportation, mobility, and catalyzes economic development opportunities. With that, staff recommends the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the proposed resolution adopting the Parker Road Corridor Plan as part of the Parker 2035 Master Plan. And that concludes staff's presentation, and I'm happy to answer questions. I also have um, our consultant from Kimley Horn, and um, Troy Russ has been our project manager, and he's happy to help answer any technical questions you might have. Questions for Mary? Mary, this is a, what, a 5, 10, and a 20-year plan. Um, Will we be revisiting this on, what, an annual or, or a three-year program to make adjustments within this plan going forward? Because I'm sure there's going to be developments coming that we're not even aware of yet on Parker Road. Sure. This, is, uh, this plan is a 20-year horizon, like any long-range plan. Um, so 20-year horizon, what we will do is um, start working on implementation strategies a bit at a time, but you are correct, this is a living document that will be revisited um, at any point in time in the future when we feel we need to get in under the hood and tweak. Okay. Could you go into a little more detail about the the level of cooperation and the intergovernmental agreement relative roles of CDOT and Town of Parker in uh, working on this? Sure, um, and Troy. Can we help out? 
You can <laughs> jump in at any time. <laughs> Um, he's familiar. He's very familiar with the intergovernmental agreement um, that the town has had with CDOT, with um, our or it's not ours. It's their CDOT's access management plan. So, do you want to add to? Yeah, as C Troy Russ, uh, eighteen nineteen Lake Spur Lane, Louisville, Colorado. Um, glad to be here tonight. Thank you. Uh, the interlocal agreement between the city and the state on Parker Road is regarding to access management. So when any public project or private development project comes for application review, typically CDOT is a ref is a referral agent, and they review the plan against uh, against the proposed development to their access standards. In place of that, they have developed a access management agreement that the Public Works Department as, can review with the planning staff, and if it's consistent with that, they can review and approve it um, through that referral agencies. In addition to that, as public investments, either from the town of Parker, Douglas County, or the state are invested within the corridor. That interlocal agreement is not just about access management, but what is the plan forward for all three agencies for Parker Road itself. So the two agreements um, sort of govern the future of the road uh, in agreement with CDOT. And the interesting thing here is we had robust participation from all the regional partners in the corridor, from E-470 to Douglas County, and most importantly, obviously, um, the Colorado Department of Transportation. They met with us monthly early in the process for about the first six months as we refined alternatives and said, what, are, what is next? And we feel very confident that they have a big support of this project. Uh, the other question I had is, what impact would this have on uh, obtaining federal funding for some of the very large ticket items that are included in this project? Um, right now, it sets the framework. There's more work to be done, and that's why you see a couple of the alternatives being carried forward, um, namely at the Main Street and the PEL. The next step is sort of advancing this to design through the federal process, so we would want actually make an application to the Denver uh, Regional Council of Governments, Dr. Cog is their term, mm -hmm. and they, through that process, the town of Parker and CDOT would collaborate on ensuring it meets federal requirements to be eligible. Right now, this project is not eligible because it's a very conceptual stage. The next step would be to find what is a project that could be supported by the federal government. And of the two um, alternatives that are listed for Main Street, would the town of Parker have the ability to uh, dictate which one is going to be chosen when that investment's going to be made by CDOT or is that decision collaborative between the town and CDOT? Um, I would, every expectation would be a collaborative conversation. Okay. Good. Other questions? Uh, just something kind of off the side, curiosity. Uh, I know earlier this year at uh, Long's Way and uh, Parker Road, they, did, they rearranged that so you couldn't do left turns either north or south. Is something in the near future proposed at uh, Park Glen and, and Parker Road and kind of the same? Because that, would, that seems to be about the same kind work. of a dangerous intersection. Yeah, I'll defer to town staff. Yeah, and that is that is an engineering um, public works question. Um, but any type of signal requires um, warrants to be met in order to be eligible for a traffic signal. So. I know that that has been requested, um, asked of engineering, and I'm just not sure if that, at this point, does meet warrants for a traffic signal. Or, or that, or what about doing the intersection the same way it was done at Long's Way, where you don't allow uh, a left turn north or south off of Park Glen? Long, long term, we are recommending access control at that intersection. But that again is a CDOT day-to-day -day operational conversation with Public Works. Is access control a fancy word for a traffic light? Mm. Or, or is a, that or, a or the other solution? Movement, yeah, right? or I, any, any of the above. Okay. Yeah. Further question? So once, once we approve this this evening, it's just an incorporation. When does the five-year mark start? When does that are you five years away from the 5, 10, and 20? Or, or is it something you begin in 2020? 
So I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm not sure I understand. But we will approve if, this this evening um, mm -hmm. to incorporate this into the resolution for the 2035 master plan. Will it be something you start aggressively in 2020? The plan, we have implementation actions in, in that last chapter there that we can start with, for lack of a better word, the low-hanging fruit. Uh, we can start with those. So we can start implementation at any time. Any of those big, larger ticket items, as Troy was mentioning, would require uh, federal funding and a whole lot more um, vetting of alternatives first before we even get to uh, making an application for federal funding. So there, there are smaller pieces mm -hmm. uh, in the plan, namely in the northern sub area, that the town was successful in applying uh, some traffic operational controls that are within the pavement for Pine Lane, and those are anticipated to be implemented next year. Okay. And so the plan is is moving forward from a transportation investment perspective. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, one more question. Uh, the first thing on the list that you had uh, for implementation was the update of the master plan. Does that require a separate vote, or is this our vote on updating the master plan? Uh, we, when we amend the master plan to incorporate anything, we will bring that amendment back to you. Okay. Specifically, yes, that amendment. <clears throat> Further questions? I'm done. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks, Troy. Thank you, Troy. Uh, uh, we come to the point of the meeting now where we allow for public comment on this matter before us. If you have a comment on this item, please step forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Each person has three minutes to speak. Hi, I'm Betty Cooperman. I live at 11532 North Donnelly Drive, Parker, Colorado, 80138. And although I'm not part of the town of Parker, I live with Parker. <laughs> but my mostly quest, biggest question was for the Bar Park Glen Way um, intersection. Ma'am, you should address the dais and we'll answer questions oh. after. Okay. So Thank just you. simple answer. So. So can I ask a question? Oh, yeah, ask the question. Okay, but... so you say that the warrants need to be met. What's the criteria for the warrant? We'll explain that. Oh, you will? Yeah. Okay, and when would it be done? When we close the public comment part. Oh, the warrant would be done? No, the explanation. we will explain the warrants and how that works. Oh, okay. I just Staff wondered. Will. Because I, I do feel... It's very important that that intersection is um, looked at seriously. So. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name's Wendy Peters. Um, address is 38487 County Road 13, Elizabeth, Colorado. I have a business on the corner of Parker Road and Park Glen Way. We've been there. It's New Dimensions Beauty Academy. And we've been there since 2009. Um, that intersection, if, if it was closed off and there people were not allowed to take a left turn, um, and cross over or if a light's not being looked at as being an alternative for the safety of that intersection. I think it, it will affect lots of the businesses in that area. If everyone's forced to go to Plaza, that back road from Pla um, Park Glen Way into the neighborhood and to the existing businesses that are on Park Glen, I think will be in affected greatly. They've got um, the alternative high school or the um, early colleges location. That road is extremely busy with kids coming in and out of cars. And I choose not to try to go that way when I have to leave to go home or to run errands because 
the kids that are getting in and out of their cars. Um, it, it's just a dangerous spot. So if there was a light that was installed at Park Glenway and maybe timed with Parker Road in a way that creates a little safer atmosphere for everyone involved, I think should be definitely evaluated carefully. Um, when we rented that building in 2009, that was one of my concerns back then. Um, and we were told that there would be a light coming in the future. Well, we're in 2019 and there still has not been a light. I've witnessed several car accidents where cars have actually come into the, um, into our grass area by our windows close to the building. Um, somebody hasn't, we haven't had a death yet occur, but I'm just wondering how long it's gonna take for somebody um, to get injured bad enough that the town decides the light is necessary there. Um, so I think the businesses in that area will be affected negatively if people are not allowed to take a left turn um, across going to Parker Road and with all of the, the students again on Park Glenway. So that's all, right. all what I Thank have you. to say. You're welcome. <clears throat> Seeing no further public comments, we will close the public comment. Uh, further questions, uh, Mary, uh, without getting too technical, uh, it's, it's certainly my understanding that decisions about lights and that kind of thing on Parker Road is up to CDOT. And yes. public works. Yes, that's cr that's but correct. Mostly CDOT. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. CDOT makes that. I'm. Thank you. I'm. Yeah. I totally understand the comments um, and the concerns. I know um, our public works engineering department has heard those same concerns. So what? Um, while it is a CDOT facility and it is their decision, it's not the town's decision. Um, we just do request I can pass on your comments to our uh, engineers and uh, ask them to again look into that and if you would like to leave your name and phone number I can see if I can get uh, at least our um, engineering department to call you back okay. and let you know Sure, sure. Okay. Um, I think we understand. We're going to pass this along to we will. Road and Bridge. We yeah. absolutely will. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, any further questions? No. No. Nothing. All right. We will close the public meeting at eight twenty-three. Uh, commissioner discussion. In in reading this uh, this plan, it, it's very evident that uh, staff, our our consultants, the partners we have, whether it's CDOT or other folks along the way, as well as the uh, public input. I think it has given us a lot of information to go forward with. As we said earlier, it is a living document, but it's, it's a pretty solid plan. And the fact that you've laid it out as a 5, 10, 20 year program allows us to fund up or work towards getting funding from both CDOT and the federal government. And I think it's, it's something that uh, we need to have this plan put into our master plan so we can then work with it and go forward. Yeah, I, I agree with John that it. Uh, I like the five, five, ten, and twenty-year plan to, to build for the future, or plan for the future, and plan for those funds so that uh, a improvement can be made for increased uh, growth and in traffic in in the Parker Corridor area. I agree. I'm in favor. 
Um, I, I appreciate all of the outreach and in the public comment that has been taken into consideration by both staff and our consultants and P3. Um, there's been consistent public engagement and opportunities to incorporate public comment into the plan. Um, and I look forward to seeing this plan come to fruition. So I agree. I don't know that I'll be alive to see it finished, but I'm in favor <laughs> of it. <laughs> hey, me either. <laughs> I was at the, um, the open house last night and someone actually said, uh, you know, when you get to be our age, you know, we probably won't see it, but that's okay. Um, no, I, I am I'm well impressed with the, uh, the effort and the time that the consultant put in um, and the additional work. I've heard nothing but kudos from staff, um, and uh, I thank you very much for that, Troy. Um, and I, I think this is an excellent plan, and I'm very excited to see it uh, moving forward. I really don't have much more to add um, other than thank you for the all, all the hard work. Uh, it's very comprehensive um, and very easy to read and follow. So I would encourage people to take the time to, to really give a look at it. It's only a few hundred pages. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, speaking of things happening in your lifetime, I was actually around here when Parker Road was a two-lane road. Mm -hmm. and, and so, <laughs> yeah, and part of it was dirt. So, I mean, things do happen in your lifetime. You know? I, I don't know that I'll see the next part, though. But uh, anyway, I, I'm certainly appreciate again all the work uh, of staff and Kimley Horn with uh, with this project, and I'll be in support of it. Do we have a motion? I move, I move the Planning Commission recommend Town Council to approve the proposed resolution adopting the Parker Road Corridor Plan as part of the Parker 2035 Master Plan. I second. I'll second. Moved by John, seconded by Rich, that Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the proposed resolution adopting the Parker Road Corridor Plan as part of the Parker 2035 Master Plan. Signify your vote, please. Passes unanimously. Next item, item 7B, a draft, a public meeting on the draft resolution number 19-097, a resolution supporting the recommendations concerning the park dedication standards contained in the June 2019 park dedication standards update recommendation, recommendations report prepared by MIG Incorporated. <laughs> We will open the public meeting at 827. Mary? Thank you, and good evening again, Chairman and Commissioners. Again, this is the resolution of support for the Parks Dedication Standards Recommendations Report. As you are aware, the town is currently working on the Land Development Ordinance LDO Modernization Project, updating Chapter 13 of the town's municipal code, and this includes the park's dedication standards section. In tandem with the LDO project, the park's standards were analyzed early. This analysis and um, recommendations from our consultant, MIG, will inform the future update of these park standards. Staff and the consultant have determined that the standards lack important requirements to provide consistent quality park outcomes and therefore are in need of updating. This study also recognized the importance of aligning new park standards with the 2018 Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Master Plan for consistency, a recommended action of the Parks Master Plan that Dennis worked on. Some of the outcomes staff wanted to achieve from this study included addressing design, amenities, and overall quality of our parks, not just quantity, achieve more consistent outcomes of usable, functional, and active parks, streamline development review and negotiations between the town and developers, and allow for better predictability, but also to retain some flexibility for those times when creative solutions are needed. Um, contents of the report included the existing conditions assessment, a comparison to peer communities, an analysis of the town's current park standards, and recommendations for new standards. 
specific recommendations include alignment of the LDO standards with the park's master plan for consistency and, of course, to avoid conflicts. Provide uh, different requirements based on different park types. Revising the park's standards to provide clearer direction, expectations, and predictability of park outcomes and update the fee structure for cash in, for the cash in lieu option to a higher per acre park construction cost. The study also recommends requiring different and appropriate park elements depending on the park type and size. Elements of a park might include minimum size, preferred size, location, service distance, access, and connectivity, all which are currently not addressed in our code. The consultant has recommended these categories you see on your screen, 11 of them, to assist the town in achieving higher um, quality park outcomes. There would also be a menu of amenities under each of these categories for the developer to pick from. The number and types of compatible amenities would, of course, depend on the park size, topography, character, et cetera. <coughs> Lastly, the town, of course, prefers that developers uh, deliver built parks instead of paying a cash in lieu for parkland, but in the extenuating circumstance of allowing cash in lieu, the study recommends that we definitely update our cash in lieu per acre park construction cost. Next steps are staff will present uh, to town council the proposed resolution at their December 2nd regular meeting upcoming. Staff will direct the town's consultant on the LDO modernization project that is Clarion Associates to write additional parks standards in the LDO for future residential development based on the recommendations in, in this report. The proposed resolution will um, allow staff to better guide discussions with developers regarding park design. And finally, the consultant also recommends creating uh, a park design manual, kind of a technical manual to assist developers in understanding the LDO standards and envision options, possibly with graphics. As a technical manual, it would supplement and illustrate the LDO standards and also, a manual is much easier to amend than um, the code, the actual uh, municipal code. Um, with that, staff recommends planning commission recommend town council approve the proposed resolution. And that concludes staff's presentation. I'm available, as is Dennis Trapp uh, from Parks and Recreation and Stacy. <laughs> Stacy lives the dream every day of uh, working with the code, and um, so she's kind of my technical wingman. Okay, questions for staff? The manual that's proposed, would that be, that would follow in the same kind of format as the uh, manual that we, uh, or the updates that we just did to uh, um, the design standards for commercial buildings, and that have pictures and and charts and, and it, follow that whole flow? It could be. Yeah, we had some internal discussion in regards to what that manual would look like. Your microphone's off. It would probably be a, a shared effort between the Parks and Rec Department mm -hmm. and Community Development Department. We've looked at some examples. Um, but yeah, it would have graphics, be a little more user friendly. Uh, user friendly not only for staff but for applicants and developers so our goal is to do that uh, at this point we're kind of discussing the funding and shared funding between the departments and how that would move forward okay other questions no nope. no all right uh, seeing no further questions we will uh, open the meeting to public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the public to step forward and comment on this item before us. Please state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, we will close the public comment. Any further questions? Nope. All right, then we will close the public meeting at 834.
Uh, Commissioner, discussion? I see this as a step in the right direction. So, thank I know, you. I know uh, yeah, staff has put a lot of work into uh, developing this. I know Dennis and his team, as well as, as all staff, has, has put this together. It gives us a very good guideline to go forward in a different way with our new developers and with the projects that uh, staff is looking for for both town-owned parks and for individual parks within the developments. So I think this is, is a real strong uh, tool that can be used. And uh, again, it will be just like what we talked about on some other things, a, a somewhat living document that if something comes up because it's in a manual, it can be adjusted much easier than if it's in code. As a quick side note, just to let you know, the Hess property that came through earlier this evening, yeah. um, we were already using this even though there wasn't a resolution of endorsement and that was really um, I think a reflection of what was in here kind of from a result standpoint just to kind of let you know and bring you up to speed in regards to how we've already really been using this to some degree as best we can with applicants thank you Dennis yeah, we've looked at this in detail in the study sessions that we've had and mm -hmm. I've been very impressed with this um, and then uh, is it the same consultant that uh, worked on this that was at the um, O'Brien Park uh, visioning event that you had? A different consultant. Different consultant. Yeah. But I mean, that level of, um, of detail that you go into in terms of looking at what's going to be put mm -hmm. in and why and what kinds of park equipment you're going to have at the, at the various parks, I think, is, uh, is, is very good. And I'm very happy about that. I hope some of the young people in our our uh, gallery today are excited about uh, looking at the parks and the importance that we put on parks here in Parker. Yeah, I think looking at this proposal, uh, it will be a big benefit to the community and uh, align with the, the vision and values that uh, come along with improvement in, in, uh, in a lot of development of the community. So it would be great to look at in the future. I'm in favor. I, I appreciate your comment, Dennis, because I saw the consistency between the presentation and what you guys have just recently presented us. Mm -hmm. So I, I see where the vision is going, and, and I appreciate that. I agree with my fellow commissioners, and I really appreciate all the hard work that was put into this. It's really good. And yes, thank you uh, again, staff, and uh, for the work on this, and look forward to seeing it come to fruition. Uh, do we have a motion? I move the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the proposed resolution number 19-097. I'm going to second that. It's been moved by Rich, seconded by Tracy. The Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the proposed resolution number 19-097. Please note your... It passes unanimously. Uh, next item, Rosemary. Thank you, Chair and members. Um, yes, you have as part of your packet the 2020 proposed planning commission meeting schedule, and also before you is a motion for approval. Right here. I'm always happy to see Rosemary when it doesn't fall on Valentine's Day. It makes everybody's <laughs> life so much easier. <clears throat> I as well. <laughs> Do we have any questions or conflicts? No. no. Do we have a motion? I move Planning Commission approve the 2020 Planning Commissioning Planning Commission meeting schedule. I second that. Moved by Iana, seconded by Ruth Ann that we have Planning Commission approved the 2020 Planning Commission meeting schedule. There's nothing further. We will adjourn the meeting at 839.
Just one thing, uh, those commissioners who'd like to join us, we have a group of young people who've come here to discuss what we do and why we do it with us. So those of you who'd like to hang around, please do. I'm gonna...